the election as had been proposed by the Krugler Commission, that laws must be in place at least two years before the election, so that we do not hurry uh, uh, the amendments to the laws and end up having elections, which has been done in a hurry, and the challenges that uh, we have at the moment. Mr. S Madam Speaker, with those few remarks, I want to support this bill with amendments. Thank you. Senator Newton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to me to also air my views regarding uh, this particular bill, Madam Speaker. And I want to say right from the onset that I support uh, most of the recommendations, most of the amendments that are being made in this bill, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, we know uh, that uh, the selection of uh, uh, the commissioners to IABC uh, has been an issue that has always caused us uh, problems uh, because then this uh, has a direct bearing on uh, the fairness of uh, an election, Madam Speaker. And that uh, 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 the, amendment, the amendments made, Madam Speaker, um, on the membership of the selection panel of IABC commissioners, uh, of course, is going to involve both the majority and minority uh, parties, Madam Speaker, is something that should be encouraged by uh, all of us. Uh, because, Madam Speaker, uh, we all live in this country, whether we are on the minority side or the majority side. And every time that uh, we have uh, a dispute regarding um, uh, uh, the fairness or otherwise of an election, Madam Speaker, then of course our economy suffers and uh, our people's businesses and their way of lives, their normal lives, Madam Speaker, are disrupted. And so the fact that uh, both the majority and minority will be considered in um, uh, picking uh, the members of this particular panel, Madam Speaker, is something that makes me feel that this bill is uh, a progressive bill, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, the fairness of a selection panel would not be guaranteed or would not be appreciated by Kenyans if uh, those members were going to be picked only by parliamentary parties or politicians, Madam Speaker. And the fact that uh, some professional bodies like the Certified Public Accountant um, of Kenya, that is um, ISPAC, Institute of Cert Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, that is ISPAC, uh, will also produce a member to this particular um, panel, Madam Speaker, of course, uh, is something that is progressive because then we expect that such professional bodies will not be uh, politically, uh, you know, inclined, Madam Speaker. Uh, LSK will also produce a member to this panel, which is also a good thing. Uh, Madam Speaker, Kenya is, uh, I do not want to say it's a notoriously religious uh, community, but, uh, Madam Speaker, the people of Kenya uh, are religious. Then we are also going to have a member from the Interreligious Council of Kenya, Madam Speaker, will add to the trust that Kenyans will have uh, in this uh, selection panel. And I think that is uh, very progressive, and that makes me feel that this is a bill that should be supported, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we have been having... Um, um, sometimes commissions, committees, uh, panels uh, that uh, are picked to do a particular job, but then they overstay, or they, they, they overstay and uh, of course, then end up um, uh, squandering uh, uh, huge amounts of money uh, from the public coffers, Madam Speaker. That we have been provided that there is an amendment that this election panel will be dissolved three months after it has been um, uh, selected, Madam Speaker, or picked, is something that is encouraging. So that they will come, do their job, after three months they go home, and then we will have savings uh, on the expenditure that we would have incurred uh, as, um, as, 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 as from the public office, Madam Speaker. So I'm excited by the fact that this um, 
panel will be dissolved within three months and only uh, the mandate uh, can only be extended as per provided in the, in the amendment uh, upon careful considerations by Parliament, Madam Speaker. And I think that is something that is uh, very encouraging to me. Madam Speaker, about the, the limitation of uh, uh, constituency and ward boundaries is something that took um, a lot of my time when I was looking at this particular bill and the amendments that have been proposed. Madam Speaker, um, one thing that uh, uh, this encourages me in is that we will involve all and sundry, our people in the villages, because they, of course there is a provision for public participation. Where And one thing that is very important, not just for public participation, but there will be sensitization of people uh, or of the pub members of the public, Madam Speaker. One thing that uh, was not very clear or is not very clear in the amendment is whether uh, when we are collecting the views of uh, the public, whether we have a provision to have such views collected in vernacular, Madam Speaker, because uh, we have some people that um, are very knowledgeable but who may, be, uh, who may not be very good in uh, the two languages that, Kiswahili, that is Kiswahili and English, Madam Speaker. So I would have loved to see a recommendation or an amendment or a suggestion that these views can also be collected in vernacular and that a provision is made for a good interpreter in order for the views of a, all and sundry, Madam Speaker, to be captured. And I say this because uh, over the last 20 or so years, we have had a great expansion on uh, vernacular uh, media, Madam Speaker. Vernacular radio, radio stations, vernacular TVs, and our people have been, been given a lot of uh, civic education through these vernacular stations, Madam Speaker. And because we want their views also, I think a provision sh should be made in order uh, for us to see to it that those that are views that they can only express in vernacular, of course, are not left out of this otherwise very important um, uh, process that affects them uh, directly, Madam Speaker. Uh, but I think I want to join um, um, those that spoke before me that talked about um, um, uh, the figures that the, the population census uh, normally produces. The figures have been disputed in the past. So I think there should be a better process of doing or carrying out um, uh, a population census, Madam Speaker. And I, by this, I think, uh, uh, I think I would propose that even as uh, the officers carrying out the, 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 the census uh, visit homes and places of work to collect data, on a population and counting of people in quotes, Madam Speaker, that uh, they would then also refer to, um, to the data with the Civil Registration uh, Bureau, Madam Speaker, so that we are not told of um, you know, numbers that are non-existent in some places, that every other information, every other piece of information that they collect then is compared and contrasted against what we have at the um, uh, Bureau uh, or at uh, the Civil Registration um, Agency, Madam Speaker, so that we can get the, uh, the exact numbers of uh, people that we have in our region. So the bad uh, by the fact, uh, Madam Speaker, that, um, um, uh, 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 that we will have individual responsibility of officers, especially when we are doing delimitation of boundaries. That any officer, Madam Speaker, that is supposed to publish uh, on the Kenya Gazette the views of the public, and they fail to do so, that they will be, they can be prosecuted and uh, they will have committed an offense and are liable to imprison, imprisonment for a term 
of one ear. So that, Madam Speaker, we bring in individual responsibility so that we have people, we do not have people that have been compromised somewhere, uh, leading to their failure, uh, leading to failure in publishing important information on Kenya Gazette that has an effect. So I think that is also something uh, that uh, caught my eye and that I thought was uh, very important because, Madam Speaker, we should uh, slowly move from collective responsibility to individual responsibility of anyone serving in a public uh, office, especially if it's a matter that affects um, uh, the public, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, we need a foolproof election. Because like I had started by saying, when we have these disputes, then uh, some of us who value our peace some of us who are very patriotic and would want, not want to see any destruction of property and disruption of people's lives would want to see a fair and free election every five years, uh, Madam Speaker. And that is why I like uh, the provision or the amendment that uh, requires um, uh, the commission uh, to review its operations and make necessary changes required to make its operations more efficient, effective, transparent, and accountable, Madam Speaker. We need to improve on the efficiency of our elections, Madam Speaker. We do not want to hear cries of Fungua Sava every five years or after every election. And so, Madam Speaker, I 